Hi, Jeff Simon here for Social Flight. Even though we're at the core stages of building this fuselage, one of the things that we want to do is build it from the inside out, getting all of the systems done and in place before we have to worry about getting around skins and the outside things that will close out the fuselage. So we want to get the electrical system all set, and that includes the avionics. Now, Social Flight's T51D Mustang build is made possible by these great sponsors, which include our avionics uh, companies, and we wanted to mirror the avionics that are included in Social Flight's A36 Bonanza. We've been flying with those for years. I personally absolutely love them. And it's really centered around these three instruments up here, which are the primary flight display that we use from Aspen Avionics, the Avidyne IFD 540, which is our key core IFD navigator. This handles all of our IFR navigation, and the L3 links up top, which is not just a transponder, but also a multi-hazard display with ADS-B traffic, FIS weather, uh, terrain, all of the things that go along with that. That's then supported down here by the backup instruments that we have from uh, RC Allen and also TrueTrack, which is handling our autopilot. So great, great avionics. And one of the amazing things is that we are taking experimental aircraft now and using certified avionics. You might wonder why we're doing that. Well, one of the biggest reasons for doing that is you have to be certified to begin with when you're dealing with the IFR navigator. And that's something that's important to us as we're going to be able to travel the country, taking the aircraft around so that all of you can see it when we're done. And we figured that at the same time as we're doing that, why not use the avionics that we were so comfortable with in the Bonanza, as I mentioned earlier. So the first thing now we have to do is actually go and figure out what our layout is going to be, which we have a general idea of from this here. But what's really going to make this easy for us is this amazing box right here from Approach Fast Stack. The Approach Fast Stack system takes away all the crazy wiring that you have to do, pin to pin to pin, throughout all these avionics. What it does is it all comes together through this Fast Stack hub. If you can see, this hub is actually a single unit that has separate pins, uh, separate uh, D sub pins for uh, connectors for all of the different avionics that get attached. And then approach FastSAC when you use their system, you actually give them what your aircraft is, what the lengths of cables are, and what the avionics are that are inside the aircraft, and they give you pre done harnesses. So it's going to be surprisingly easy for us once we have the layout and we have the mounting done to be able to actually wire it up. We're just going to mount the hub and plug and play with the harnesses that they gave us and then take the pigtails for power and things like the antennas, etc. Bring those out and hook those up. So when it comes to the actual construction of the panel, we have to level this part here. We have to make sure that the panel is actually straight up and down. And then the way it works is that this panel itself uh, has a supporting structure behind it which is the actual upper bulkhead. I'm actually going to take this off to show you what that uh, looks like right now. Let's get this off. Okay, so this part is the actual panel. And then behind the panel, if I can move that out of the way, is this supporting bulkhead. Now normally what they do in the instructions is they go and you cut this out so that this is just a support along the perimeter and then the panel can be screwed into that and removed along with the avionics for easy maintainability down the road. But since we have this panel in place and it's solid right now, it is a great test piece for us. So we're actually going to mark out here where the stacks are going to go. We're going to try to mirror what we want to do here and experiment on this by mounting the trays to the back of this support first and then actually see how they fit because ultimately we also need to cut access holes in the next station bulkhead which is station number four as we move towards the front of the aircraft because you have to be able to actually get uh, the connectors out and those are even more forward. If we take a look at a tray, this is a tray for the IFD 540 for example. So you're talking about a pretty long thing there that has to go from this station all the way back to be able to get to the connectors that are on the back here. So that's a lot of explaining. Let's get to work. And 
then the Bonanza it's done on a, on a panel that comes out. But that's another option for us here also, by the way, that we can do. If you, is, if you want to be able to just pull this, all we have to do is segment the panel. That's all you have to do is have screws. All right, so we hit our first snag pretty quick. When we looked at what's involved in the back of the tray for the IFD 540, we found that we're not going to have the clearance to be able to mount it here where we thought it was going to be the best fit uh, because of the uh, bar that we've got behind it uh, uh, on the station number four. So what we need to do now is rethink this and we really have two options. Option number one is uh, to go and rearrange these and see if we can fit it in if we actually put our link system down here and put the IFD system above it, basically, that type of a layout here. Okay, so we've got everything marked, took a lot of different measurements in order to figure out the uh, holes for the trays, but also making enough room so that the faces of the units have space. Because of course, the tray is one size, but of course the face is a little bigger, and so you have to space the trays a little bit, and that's where your cutout has to be. So uh, now what I'm gonna do is actually, we need to cut these out. And I'm gonna try using this square punch. Uh, instead of just drilling holes into corners and then you know cutting with a wheel let's see what happens with this because of course the nice part is we're experimenting and uh, we're just using this uh, uh, the the backing plate that we're going to end up getting rid of uh, anyway so let's see where we go Let's assume that we attach this all here, right? You can't take it out. 
what if it's just, so let's think about it for a minute. So what if it just sits? What if the whole panel comes out and then it goes in and has these rails and is perfectly attached, goes in, and when it goes in, it sits on here. So all the weight down weight. Now we have to worry about up. Yeah. What protects us from up. Yeah. And that's the only thing we would have to like then, then worry about. So one of the things we've had to do in uh, designing this radio rack that's going to fit the Aspen, the Avidyne, and the Lynx system is also to support the back and to come up with a system that allows us to put it in and out of the panel for servicing. And so I'm working on this idea that has these angle brackets in the front that, it, uh, that attach it to the actual instrument panel. The instrument panel will be able to be released and then we're going to use this square tubing that actually kind of puts it on rails all the way to the next support uh, at the furthest, uh, the next bulkhead forward in the fuselage. So in order to make that happen, um, I have to secure the back to those rails and I'm making up these aluminum pieces, which you can see here, which are gonna act as triangles. So let me see if I can make this kind of a visual for you. So you can see that we have these angles on the front that make that give you a place in the face and then if we use this square tubing and we create this uh, this rail that kind of goes there the rail will stick out back that when you put it in will actually go into receptacles and sit on the next frame member so that'll give us a really good support that when we put it in there those rails go they sit and we're in really good shape and those will get captured by hat sections little small hat sections um, which are perfectly sized for uh, this square tubing to slide into and sit into place. One of the things that really helps uh, during a construction like this is to get a supply of uh, 832, 632, 1032 plain nuts, non-lock nuts. Uh, almost everything in aviation is a lock nut uh, to uh, hold things together. But when you're putting things together and taking them apart as many times as we have to do here when we're trying to create a prototype of something, uh, it really, really helps a lot just to be able to spin on and off temporary fasteners like plain nuts. And they're not really readily available everywhere. You have to like uh, uh, sometimes find them that, uh, that match the actual hardware you have. All right, so we tackled some interesting challenges in this build. Now, normally you might think, why don't you just start with some CAD software and lay out all the instruments. There's uh, some really great programs on the market. Put it together, draw your panel, get it cut or something like that, and you're all done. But of course, as I mentioned in the very beginning, things are different for this. First of all, the T-51 Mustang being an inline aircraft, your panel isn't very big to begin with. And in mimicking the actual structure of the original P-51 Mustang, you have other obstacles to contend with. And so it's actually a challenge that I find really exciting. We had to start with this idea of what instruments we're going to use and then the challenge of working around it. And of course, since I mentioned in the beginning, we're going to do IFR with this. We need an IFR certified navigator and I'm a huge fan of the Avidyne units. Also, I absolutely love the L3 Lynx because that's a multi-hazard display, gives everything we need. And then of course, as a primary display, our Aspen, absolutely love the Aspen Evolution instruments. So which, those are the three that we're actually gonna use. 
Getting it to fit is another story. And so figured out all that, figured out the obstacles, but to get around those obstacles had to do it the old school way. And you can see the smile on my face because I love that. I absolutely love the idea of just fitting them into place, figuring out what fits where and how they're going to fit, and then using this template essentially of the original piece to cut out and figure out where everything's going to mount. Um, I just like that. It's kind of like old school hacking around and fitting things the way they're going to be. And then at the end of the day, we have those critical instruments set and everything else follows suit after that. But then we hit that other snag that you saw. We had to figure out how we're actually going to support them. And so we created, as you could see, that structure that actually puts all of them together here, has them on these rails, and these rails actually get uh, encapsulated. They go into sockets that we built on the next structure back. And so when this slides into place, it just fits. Everything after that, we can now lay out the other instruments and move to the next level. And that's what's coming in the next video. You'll see how we moved from this stage right here with this temporary piece that we did to actually going and laying out what we want to have with these instruments in place, actually doing the sub panel and drawing out here uh, the, all of the where the instruments are going to go, coming up with what the sub panel is going to be. And then I can actually uh, tilt this forward and show you a quick view, there we go, of how that is actually going to work. When that goes into place, we were able to play with that all coming in the next video. And then the really big thing where we work with our friends over at Fabco and actually get panels cut that are going to do all the steps that we need and get to that final instrument panel. So with that, please join me next time where we'll reveal how we did the rest of that process, give you some tips and tricks, and hopefully if you decide to build an aircraft someday or even on your certified aircraft, you'll have a few more ideas to think of along the way. Until next time, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight. Be sure to check out the Social Flight mobile apps and socialflight.com where we have tens of thousands of aviation events and destinations, $100 hamburgers, and our Fly to Win Challenge, which is so important because you've got great opportunities to win some wonderful prizes from our partners here at Social Flight. Until next time, I wish you all blue skies.